What we're going to be looking at here is preferred stock and we're going to be looking at the dividends distribution here and we're going to be comparing to the cumulative preferred stock versus non-cumulative and also looking at non-participating versus participating preferred stock in the dividends that are available. And our example we'll be using here is where Corporation A has the following stock outstanding and retained earnings. Uh, one here, they have preferred stock of 4,000 shares at $100 par value and it pays a 6% dividend rate on it. Number two here, they have common stock of 10,000 shares, $50 par value. And three, the retained earnings is at $140,000 and all will be paid out in dividends for this example. And then the preferred stock also has two years of a dividends in arrears. Okay, so we'll we're going to be going through three different cases here for these uh, this preferred stock here. But just first here to note that a cumulative preferred stock, that's where the, if the corporation fails to pay a dividends in any year, it must make it up in later years before paying dividends to the common stockholders. And a, dividends in later years not yet paid are called dividends in arrears here. And number two, non-cumulative preferred stock, that's where the past dif dividends here that would be payable are lost forever. They don't have to be paid here when you're talking about the non-cumulative preferred stock. So let's start with our first case here. We're going to look here at preferred stock where it's non-cumulative and non-participating. And now when we're talking about non-cumulative, it does not pay dividends in arrears here. So what we would do here, we had those two years of dividends that were payable here, but uh, since this is a non-cumulative here, we don't have to pay those two years. So all we're going to look at is the current year dividend here. So again, for preferred stock, we had 4,000 shares at $100 par value at a 6% dividend rate. So that equates to 24,000 that'll be assigned to our preferred stock here. And then our common stock, that simply gets the remaining here. Now we have 140,000 in retained earnings that were paid out here. 24,000 went to the preferred stock. So the common stock just gets allocated the difference. 140,000 less than 24,000 of preferred stock. Common stock gets 116,000 allocated for their dividends. So you, this is how we've allocated it here. 24,000 to preferred stock, 116,000 to common stock. Total amount here of 140,000. Dividends paid out and that that was all the return, retained earnings that were paid out. Now let's look at the second case here where we're going to have preferred stock. This is where it's cumulative and again non-participating. So when we're talking about a cumulative, we're going to have to pay the dividends in arrears here. So for example here, our dividends in arrears, of course it was for a preferred stock, 4,000 shares, $100 par value at the 6% dividend rate here. And we have two years that we have to pay here, two years that we have to pay back on that here. So uh, that equates to $48,000 here for the preferred stock. And then for the current year, just as we calculated above here for the preferred stock, 4,000 shares, $100 par here at the 6% dividend rate, that equates to $24,000. So what we would do, again, the balance goes to our common stock that's remaining here of the hundred and four of the total amount that's remaining here in $140,000 dividend that's being paid out. So you take the, for a common stock, uh, you'd uh, take the 140,000, subtract out the 48,000 here paid in arrears to a preferred stock plus 24,000 here paid for the current year here. So the difference is going to give us uh, 68,000 here that goes to our common stock. So now we've allocated a total here of 48,000 to preferred stock plus 24,000 here for the, that was for the arrears. This is for the current year. So that goes to a preferred stock and then the balance here goes to the common stock at 68,000. So total amount here, dividends that were allocated was $140,000 here. Okay, so we've taken care of our first two cases here. Now let's go up here and look at participating preferred stock uh, where the share here is rateably uh, rated, rateably distributed here with the common stock in any profit distribution beyond the dividend rate of the preferred stock. So this is what we're going to be looking at here, this participating preferred stock. So this is case th three here, that, or case C that we'll be looking at here. This is where the per preferred stock is cumulative 
participating and what we're talking about cumulative you're going to pay the dividends in arrears that we talked about before here and this is where the participating comes in we talked about the non-participating in the previous two two cases here now we're going to be involved with a participate here with the participating with the common stock in dividends here and that's where it we're we're going to have to divide up these dividends here. We're we're going to we participate with the common stock in dividends greater than the dividend rate here of six percent, the preferred stock dividend rate. So let's go and let's look at our calculations here. So we just we just have to follow along here and look at the um, the arithmetic that's involved here. Okay. So first for our uh, po uh, preferred stock again we had those two years of uh, payments in arrears on the dividends here that we calculated before four thousand one hundred dollar part and six percent interest uh, dividend rate here at two years that we calculated before at forty eight thousand dollars here going to the preferred stock for the dividends and arrears now this is where we're going to come up here and well again let's just look at the preferred stock here for the current year that was that six percent here times uh, the 4,000 shares, $100 par. That was what we calculated before here. Preferred stock here gets $24,000 worth of dividends for the current year. Okay, so now this is where it comes in here where we're talking about this participating amount here. So we're going to have our common stock here. It doesn't actually pay a dividend here, but we use the dividend rate here, the preferred stock, to do our arithmetic here. So for our common stock, remember we had 10,000 shares here, $50 par value times that dividend rate right here that we're using for allocating of we use for a preferred stock we're going to use the same dividend rate here on our common stock so that arithmetic here ten thousand fifty dollar par times six percent gives us an allocation here to our common stock of thirty thousand dollars so okay so we've allocated um, our our stock up to this point here, 48,000 here for a preferred stock, 24,000, that was for the arrears, 24,000 for the current year dividend here, and then our common stock was allocated here, $30,000 based on that 6% dividend rate here and the shares that are outstanding here and its par value. Now, this is where we're going to come up with, the, where we have to use this alloc uh, allocation here um, for the um, cumulative participating amount. So this is the balance of the dividend is going to be rated here on a pro rata basis here. And we're going to make the calculation here where the preferred stock is going to get allocated 16888 and the common stock is going to be allocated $21,112. So the total amount here that we have to remaining to allocate here is $38,000 of the $140,000 total. So let's look at this $38,000, how we got that. Okay, and that's just simple arithmetic here. That's the additional amount available for what they call participation. So we have the total amount here of 140,000 allocate. Uh, we already allocated 48,000 here to preferred stock. Also 24,000 here to preferred stock for the current year dividend here. And also that 30,000 that went to the common stock here. So the difference here gives us that 38,000 that we have to allocate. Okay, so this is how we make our allocation. We got really two ways to do it. We'll go through the long way here first. So we take the par value of the stock uh, to participate here. So we have our um, par value here of our preferred stock. Well, that was the 4,000 shares here at $100 per share. That equates to $400,000 for the preferred stock. And then for a common stock, well, we got 10,000 shares here at a $50 par amount. That equates to $500,000. Okay, so our total uh, par value that we have here, 400,000 plus 500,000 is gonna give us $900,000. Okay, so we're gonna be using the uh, available amount here of 38,000 plus this 900,000 to come up with a percentage here that we're going to be using for our pro rate allocation here. So that that we do here, this is what we call the rate of participation. We just take the $38,000 amount here that uh, that available amount for participation divided by the total par value that we have here of nine hundred thousand dollars so thirty eight thousand divided by the total par value for the stocks here of nine hundred thousand is going to give us a pro rata percentage rate here of four point two 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 percent i carried it out to four decimal pa uh, points here okay so now we're going to look at our the uh, what they call the participating dividend here 
Okay, we, so we take this um, percentage here that we calculated here. That's the rate of participation. We take that times, in each case here, the par value that we have here for each the par preferred stock and our common stock. So we take that percent, a rate of per that percentage here, 4.22 percent here for the preferred stock. We're looking at 400,000 here in the um, par value amount. We take that percentage times the 400,000. We get an allocation here of $16,888 here. And then for the common stock, use that rate of participation here at 4.222% again times its par value here of $500,000 here and that equates here to $21,112. So you add those together here total amount 16,888 plus 21,112 you come up with your total participation here of $38,000. Now that is what we had to allocate up here. So if you just go over this again remember you have to determine your par value of the stock to participate here uh, number of shares times its par value here and then again for each of those for the preferred stock and our common stock to come up with your par value for each of those the total amounts here and then you just sum those you take the total par value here divided by the uh, particip uh, additional amount here that for participation you come up with this percentage here and then or the rate of participation here in a percentage amount here and then you just take that rate of per a percentage participation times the par value for both your allocated to your preferred stock here in your common stock that gives your your total allocation here uh, in this case total allocation between the two again added up to thirty eight thousand dollars here that's the amount that was available here in participation and that's the arithmetic we use to get through this now there's also another way to compute this participating amount and this is probably the easiest way to look at it you take your per preferred stock here that's the four hundred thousand dollar par value that we had up here plus the total par value here of nine hundred thousand here do you divide that fractional amount here four hundred thousand divided by the total amount here of nine hundred thousand the four hundred thousand is for the preferred stock par value here nine hundred thousand is total for the preferred stock and the common stock here take that times the amount that we have to allocate here thirty eight thousand you're going to come up with sixteen thousand eight hundred eighty eight dollars same as we did up above here using our rate of our participation and then for common stock the same thing $500,000 par value divided by the total par value of 900000 time that fractional amount times that 38000 that we have to allocate here that'll give you 21112 so same same as we had up here so total amounts here that you've uh, computing the participating amount here added up to the total participating here of $38,000 okay so now let's go up and look at our chart up here so this is how we came up with our balanced dividend here on a pro rata basis. Remember, that was 16,888 for our preferred stock and common stock here 21,112. So, here we allocated between our preferred stock here and our common stock here on a pro rata basis. We allocated that total uh, remaining amount here of 38,000. So to determine your total dividend that was payable here for both the preferred stock and your common stock, just sum your totals here. 40, for the preferred stock, 48,000 plus 20, 24,000 plus 16,888. Yeah, it's going to give you a total dividend here that, that would be for the preferred stock allocated would be $88,888 here. And then the common stock, you can see that here. 30,000 plus 21,112 gives a total amount here of $51,112. So this is where, uh, and then you just sum those together, you're going to get a total of $140,000 here. Okay, so this is how we went up here and we use, this was for this cumulative here participating uh, how we had to allocate this preferred stock when it was designated here as cumulative participating stock here. So again, we had the cumulative, what that means we have the cumulative here, we have to pay the dividends in arrear here, and then we went had to determine our participating amount here with the common stock in dividends that were greater than the dividend rate here of 6%. So you can see here, that was our, we paid our arrears here, of 48,000 here for the two years in arrears plus the uh, current dividend here of 6% here for the current year at 24,000 and then we had to allocate the common stock based again on that dividend rate that we use for a preferred stock and then we went in and we did our pro rata 
basis here to determine what goes to preferred stock here and our common stock. All right, so you can go through the arithmetic here and see how we did that here, but that's how you would handle this participating preferred stock where it's shared on rateably with the common stock in any profit distributions beyond the dividend rate here of the preferred stock. Okay, so that summarizes it.